Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Pauline Baird. I'm from Buxton, Guyana, in South America. I'm a cultural bearer who tells stories about her village. My village is a very historic village that was bought by formerly enslaved Africans for me. And so I grew up knowing about my culture and I'm very proud of it. But you see, people think they know about Buxton, but they don't know Buxton. So I'm here to tell you stories. Let me talk story. What do stories say? Well, today's story is about this. You see this? This is a piece of paper, right? When you've been in elementary school, you never used to write note on paper and crunch it up so and throw it give your friend. Well, I do that too. I remember I was about 12 years old in high school. It was math class and it was Mr. Mooney Passad math class. Y'all remember Mooney? At Buxton Government Secondary School. Mooney was a nice man and I liked him and he liked me. Not in that kind of way, student teacher. And I respected Mooney, but I didn't understand the math that Mooney was teaching. So I wrote a note on a piece of paper like this. I write the note and I say, me not understand what you say. And the thing is, I wrote it in Creolese. I fold it up and gave it to my friend Denise. Y'all don't try to forget which Denise. It was three Denise in that class. So anyway, one of the Denise I gave it to. She opened it and she read it. And she turned to me and said, you mean for telling me you're going to write them too? Wow. That gave me pause. And over the years, I remember that conversation. I wrote my note in Creolese. Denise read my note in Creolese, answered me in Creolese to tell me that she is surprised that I wrote this note in Creolese. You mean for tell me you go write them too? I wonder what kind of narrative Denise had in her 12-year-old brain that told her that our language, our first tongue, is not a written language or it shouldn't be written. And today that conflict exists. I'm reading a book called Creole Composition. And in Creole Composition, they talk about this business of writing in British English or you know, the language of colonials and your own Creole influenced language. There's a lot of discrepancies and fights in, in that area. But this story that I tell, it fits in that conversation because when we grow up with Creole-influenced languages, sometimes people get confused. And maybe in our village setting or somewhere along the line, kids get this idea that our language is not supposed to grace the pages of books or not supposed to be on this piece of technology called paper. Well, I have news for such people. I think Creolese can bear our culture and it can be inscribed and delivered on any kind of technology. And I aim to, to change all of that. And how I did this is because of the influence of one woman I wanna talk about today, Teacher Fenella Abrams. Teacher Fenella Abrams was a young trained teacher from Sarah Potter College of Education. She had come back to her school that she went to, Buxton Government Secondary School, to teach literature. And Teacher Fenella made literature come alive. The first time I heard about a thesis statement was from Teacher Fenella. Oh, it was beautiful. I remember it very clearly. And so she, she brought this book. And the book we had to read was called The Sun's Eye. And in that book was the first time I saw Creolese in a book. Oh my Lord, my little spirit burst into joy. We own language there inside a book. Creolese there inside a book. I didn't know that. And from the time I see Creolese inside a book, I decided that I want to read a lot of books. I came to understand that our stories in whatever tongue we speak them, whether it's Creolese of the basest kind, of the rawest kind, 
is ours and we should celebrate that. We should exalt our language. And for those who say Creole is broke up and bad English, I get a Chaucer. Go read Chaucer and then you come tell me about broke up. So I decided to do a thing. I wrote my PhD dissertation. It's nine chapters. Uh, sorry, it's five chapters and nine letters. Nine letters compose or comprise my dissertation. And the first chapter is written to the Buxtonians. And it begins, Dear young Buxtonians, what is story say? Village back dam underwater, crop a rotten stack a dead, rotten Catania, rotten Casada, and governor sleep a feather bed. Town the bottom river, he na no house on hat. Town the bottom river, he na no house on hat, ma tell you. Governor been a train with the foot cat ten. You see, suit and the car that white like rain. Special, special carriage, special porter for carry his luggage. Tone the bottom river, he na no house on hat. Tone the bottom river, he na no house on hat, ma tell you. That time, Boxing Bay get some strapping no man when I been frightened back from man. Me not been there when it happened. Ask me by him, ask me sell him. Woman throw themselves a line. Train stop. Train stop. And are the train them stop? Are the governor? Now that's a poem that I wrote in my dissertation, first page. I didn't translate it. I didn't transcribe it. It was for the village. That poem was written by Baba Yusi Kwayana. It was always recited by the late Mark Austin on Emancipation Night, 1st of August. Mark would recite this poem when we were kids. As I was doing my dissertation, I was looking for our women, the voices of our women, and the stories they told, and I couldn't find them in books. I was reading about American women who fought for their rights, but I couldn't find our women. And then I thought I have to go to the oral traditions because in our oral traditions carry our stories. And so I went there and our story was there in Creolese. I had to hunt that poem down to get it in its entirety and I still haven't gotten the whole thing. But I asked Mark Austin, I called him on the phone, I said, Mark, I need this poem. Can you tell me all the lines? And Mark said, yeah, look who me can't remember that thing. Me can't remember all them thing. I said, Mark, you gotta tell me. And he convinced me he couldn't remember. I went away and I thought I couldn't let this go. I sent him an email. I said, Mark, you have children. You have daughters. And one day they will want to ask you questions. They will want to know about your culture and where you came from and your stories. What are you going to tell them? He sent me an email back with all the words that he remembered. I took that and I went to the village. I flew from, from the States back to the village. And I went to Grace French. And at her house, she gave me a few more lines. By the time I could reach Company Road, six, seven people called me. Hey, girl, hey, girl, body bait's daughter. Um, Grace French said, call she. As I'm going, when I got back to where I was staying at the Ford's house, I called Grace. And she reminded me of another few lines. I assembled this poem, and then I called Kwayana. I was kind of afraid to ask him because I didn't want him to say he didn't write it and he didn't know. So I called Kwayana, and I asked him, do you know this poem that has Creolese about village Bagdam? And he said, well, if it's in Creolese, then I'm the culprit. And so I was happy. Why I tell the story is because I want to break that myth that our language cannot grace the halls of, the, of, of academia. Our language can grace the halls of academia. This box no woman did it. And I wrote it in Creolese so that our children can understand that their language is important. I didn't grow up in the village reading a lot of Creolese in my early life. And I asked Kwayana, what do you think is happening? Is it important for us to learn our culture and to learn about Creolese in school and to write Creolese in school? He said, if you never write Creolese, 
or learn anything about Creoles in school, that doesn't make you a person that is less than. You can get a good education and be a solid person without that. But if you have a sound education in your culture and your background, then you're a more rounded person. You are richer for that. And he also said, certain things must never be taught in school. It's not the purview of schools, but certain things must be taught by the village. Boxing people, teach I a picnic. Walk good. <laughs>